the thing about Oculus was uh, VR was my was my hobby at the time. And so I started Oculus because I really liked VR and I wanted to make a run. I, I, had, I had a few good ideas for basically how to make a better VR headset and how to replace certain high-end hardware functions with much cheaper software functions, make it easy to use for game developers. Uh, but you know, I started working on VR when I was 15 as a hobby because I was building PC gaming rigs and I had built a really, really nice PC gaming rig. And as I started planning out my next round of upgrades, it just wasn't exciting. And it was clear that the future of gaming was not going to be more monitors and more graphics cards and just you know incremental improvements. It was going to be something radically different. And uh, as a science fiction fan, it was apparent to me that virtual reality was not just the next step in gaming, but the final thing. You know, what once you have perfect virtual reality, like that's it. The ability to simulate anything a human could experience or imagine experiencing. That's that's the holy grail. And so I, I decided that I was gonna work on that as a hobby. And Oculus kind of came out of that, not because I thought that VR was going to be the best business ever or because it was going to make me a lot of money, but because I loved working on VR. It was very interesting. I, I, I had a lot of fun working on it. And uh, it turned out that I was doing the right thing at the right time. And the technology was in a place where I could build a multi-billion dollar company out of those insights and ideas from a hobby. Um, but, you know, to the point you just you just mentioned, you know, I've, I've often said Android was different because I started from the beginning saying, I am going to build this into be a major company so that I can have a big impact through the size and through the influence, uh, which is very different from, you know, let, let, let's make my hobby into a thing that pays the bills so I can move out of this 19 foot camper trailer and into a real apartment. Following your passions generally doesn't lead to uh, being a, a billionaire or founding a multi-billion dollar. Company. Oh no, not at all. I mean, one of my contrarian pieces of advice to people is to never follow your passions, follow your talents because those often are not uh, 100% aligned. So many people, they get this false advice where they're told, follow your dreams, follow your passion, whatever you love doing, that's the thing that you really should do with your life. The problem is that the, the most of the things worth loving are not things where you are going to be able to make money uh, or certainly have an impact. And this is especially true for, I think, kids and teens. You know, kids and teens, told, follow your passions. Like, no, no, no. What you're passionate about with when you're nine years old has very little correlation with good life decisions. Uh, it's, it, it, is, it, is, it is bad advice for kids, in, in, in my opinion. And it, that's how you end up with the number one most desired job uh, for children being uh, a YouTuber uh, or, a, you know, or a Twitch streamer rather than being an astronaut or an engineer uh, or 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 a writer or you know whatever whatever stereotypical great profession yeah. you want to you want to lay out. You there. say children. I'm 34 years old and I'm a YouTuber <laughs> now. So I I uh, you know I don't think it's just children that are aspiring on that. But I think it's interesting. I mean the the point about oh it's fine to have good YouTubers and I think your success in this space shows that, that you do have at least some talent that lies there. The issue is when it is by far the most desired oh, job sure. in the whole country. Like we, we can't have a country of YouTubers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh no, very much true. It's, it's interesting. I mean, it sort of goes to the, I, I've heard you talk about the, you know, people wanting to be lawyers or when, when artists or whoever within a company go to the engineers and say, why this isn't fair. Like uh, you guys are getting paid more than me. Maybe can you speak a little <laughs> bit about those? I know you're, t yeah, I mean, I've, I experienced this, especially at Facebook. You know, there was there was this interesting uh, interesting dynamic where you th there was this idea that some people have that all work is of equal value, and like this is a thing people say. They say all work is of equal value, and so you'll have someone whose days consist of like brainstorming and sketching flowers and thinking about how they're going to do a sticker in the Facebook chat, and then you'll have them complain and say. Why is it that engineers are valued more highly at this company? We live in a culture that values certain things over others. And the reality is all of our work has equal value. And I'd say like, you know, the, the, the autismo super engineers would be like, no, you are wrong. Your work has less value by all definitions of the word value. Uh, that's why you're paid less. That's why there's less prestige. That's why there's there's like that that's why it's easier to get a job doing it uh and, and you know, people are like how could you say that you everyone has equal worth like no there are certain jobs that create more value in the world for myself and for everybody else and while while wages are not a perfect reflection of value disparity certainly there are, everyone should be able to agree that there are jobs that create more value for mankind than others and uh, that that was a uh, yeah there's people who would always say that that that, that was unfair and, uh, and the thing is some of that is due to like lawyers they have to go to law school and you know go through a really painful grind but also their jobs 
really are are are, are terrible. Yeah. Um, and like you'll even hear this from lawyers who love practicing law. Nobody will say this job makes you feel good. It activates all the serotonin and dopamine on a regular. It's like no, this is a tough job. And one of the reasons I'm paid more is because it uh it, it sucks and you have to pay people more if they're going to do shitty jobs. And it's just, it's it's just very interesting that that huge that huge gap because uh, I've always been someone where I've I've always thought myself as pretty pretty rational. And even when I wanted to be a journalist, I never would have dreamed of going and be like, yes, my my job as a as a writer is uh, you know, equally equally valuable in terms of salary as an engineer. I would have to be like, oh, well maybe I'm making a bigger impact in the world. But it's definitely not worth as much money as the guy who had to go to school to be an engineer. It's interesting. You're making me think that maybe not all lawyers uh, are just in it for the love of law. I Oh, n- not at all. And a lot of lawyers aren't and a lot of doctors aren't. And that's not to say that they don't find meaning and worth and value in it. And before anyone says that I'm attacking doctors and lawyers, I have a lot of doctor and uh, lawyer acquaintances, friends and colleagues who will say the exact same thing. Like, look, you don't get into you don't get into law uh, if if law didn't pay well, I probably wouldn't be doing it. Yes, I think that's... I, I think even that's, if they love the law, listen, even if they love it. If, if we cut lawyer salaries in half, I think there's going to be less of them. I just, uh, it's a it's a, it's a a theory of mine, but I think that's true. Well, I mean, this also gets to being in like, like executive positions that people often are saying, oh, you know, CEOs are paid too much and C-suite is paid too much. Have... I know this is this sounds like such a stereotypical rich rich executive thing to say. Like having been on the other side of that, where you are responsible for everyone's well being, you're the final backstop for legal and compliance and fundraising. And if you don't perform, everyone's out of a job and the company's gone. Like I think a lot of these guys are not paid enough, especially the the ones who already have a lot of money. Like it you if we took CEO salaries and and dropped them to be remotely like what it is to be a worker, I think most of these people would be like, man, peace out. I am out of here. It is not worth the extraordinary stress and demand. Also, they're, I mean, they're, they're seeing, I, most of these people, they're not seeing their kids. They're not seeing their families. They, they have to give up on so many holidays on so many occasions because they have to put the company first. Um, like you, you couldn't pay me enough to do the job of some of these executives that I've seen, especially in companies that are going downhill. Like, Exactly. They're like, oh, how's this company failing? And they're paying the CEO $10 million a year. It's like, you know why they're paying $10 million a year? Because the company's failing. You, yeah, you you want that job? You want to go work in the place where every day your job is to try to attempt the 10% probability chance of a turnaround? That's that I, You couldn't pay me to do it with any amount of money. It's interesting. Yeah. I, uh, I, I mean, it, it's all these things, it sort of goes back to the incentive point between dollars and and prestige and yep. what and it's sort of like, hey, listen, the everyone's like, well, why don't we have better people in politics? And I'm like, well, listen, that's a pretty fucking shitty job, and you don't get paid very well, and like people send well, for you many death. people in politics, it's the best job they can have too. Like, there's there's a lot of people where like 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 yeah, like it, it isn't that great of a job, and people are like, oh, well, it pays one hundred seventy thousand dollars a year, and you get benefits. Like, yeah, 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 but. You spend all your time traveling. You're basic. You're fundraising all of the time. You get death threats all the you time. You get death from threats all the time. People. Your your family is now on is is now is now being attacked by by press by random people on Twitter. You, and that never goes away. Even after you're a politician, you're it's now. It's like why are so many politicians sociopaths? It's like well, listen, you it takes be a one. sociopathic person to <laughs> want that job, right? One, and I think a lot of the best politicians I've seen are the ones that get out of politics. Uh, eventually, so like like I, they'll get in because they really want to make a difference, and then uh, they 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 just can't take they it. Come to yeah. If you're able to survive in politics for 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 decades, it either means that you are you know, truly a believer in your mission, uh, or you are broken in the brain in some way. Yeah, I think that's right. That's right. So 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 uh, Oculus. Uh, so VR. You started it at 19, uh, sold yep. by 21 for. Billions, two to three billion, depending on sort of how you depends on how you count. Yeah, what's not, a billion? It depends between, on the accounting. Yeah, what's a billion between friends, <laughs> right? Uh, but uh, well, spe- it, speci- specifically, like the, the reason for the confusion, and just for anyone who's, who's, who's listening, the, the official number was two point three billion dollars. Um, but the way that it worked out is there was also a seven hundred million dollar employee retention uh, employee retention package because that was a lot of the value of Oculus was the employees, and some employees had more equity than others. But you really had to make sure that people who did not necessarily have a lot of equity ownership at the time of the acquisition were sufficiently motivated that they were going to continue working. And that's also true for some people that did have a lot of equity ownership, where you had to make it worth hanging around instead of just 
immediately piecing out. Um, you know, that's one of the downsides of a rich tech market is uh, you, sometimes you'll have great people brought together. They accomplish something extraordinary and then they make enough money to go spend time with their families. And who who can blame them? Totally. But it's it's a loss for the industry when you have these, you'll have a successful company. I mean, you've seen this before, company IPOs. And then it's right after the lockout period, people half of the most later. talented people, they're gone, not just from the company, but from the workforce forever. Um, I'm not saying that people shouldn't make money. I love it. But it's it's a, it, it's a one of those things where if you, if you want to paint the whole picture, you got to look at the downsides yeah, too. Yeah. But and, that's why there was a $700 million retention package. Yeah. Make sure that those people stuck around for a few years to see through what we were doing. And so, so it was 75 people when it was acquired, yep. right? And by the time you left, and uh, as we touched on, uh, <laughs> a, a, in 2016, or I guess beginning 2017, of 2017 yep. uh, how many people were at the company? About 1,400 people. Do you regret- April 1st, 2017. April 1st, 2017. Uh, do you regret having- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you regret having uh, sold the business to Facebook? Not at all. Yeah. It was definitely the best thing for VR. Because of the industry itself, because of the financial Every, outcome, everything. Because, I mean, it, yeah. it was we got the resources we needed to get the rift out the door and to fund so much content that never would have gotten funded otherwise. Uh, so much of the VR content, and especially in the very early years, you have to understand, could never have survived organically. Uh, the, the, the market was too small. Nobody could possibly have invested the money that we did to start that self-sustaining flywheel of people wanting to buy the headset so that they can play the cool games. Uh, which then you know leads to money, then leads to more cool games, which leads to more sold headsets. Like to kick off that flywheel, takes billions of dollars. I mean, look at what it took even just to start uh, Xbox. That took billions of dollars, and that was a game console. People understood that they were able to have ports from other consoles to their platform. Like starting a new platform takes billions of dollars, and Facebook put in the money. Now, I don't agree with every tactical decision they've made, but broadly, they are putting more into VR than anybody else in the world. And people often point to other companies, especially at the time they did. They said, well, why not Google? Why not Microsoft? All those companies have dropped their VR initiatives. Facebook's the only one that has the singular God King leader who has the power and the money to continue investing in virtual reality, no matter what anyone says about it, shareholders, board of directors, or otherwise. And it, it, it's, it's really hard to be unhappy with that outcome as someone who wants VR to happen. Now people say, oh, but do you really want in the hands of that particular corporation? Do you really want you know this particular model of, of, of advertising to take hold? And my view is like the really hard thing is getting VR to the mainstream. It's not necessarily going to happen. You, know, it, 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 you have to make it happen. Seeing that happen is my life's work, was my life's work anyway. Uh, I it, It's hard for me, no matter how angry I am about how it all turned up. It's hard for me to turn around and say, because I got screwed, this was bad. Yeah. It, that's just not how it is. It, it's, it was good and I got screwed. Yeah. That's interesting. So, um, so now finally, uh, so Andrew, oh, we're it, sitting in your it, office it, and I made a bunch of money. Yeah. I, like, I, I don't want people to act like, you know, I, I did I did not walk away, walk away poor. Uh, so that, that certainly just realistically does make it a little bit easier to, to rest, to rest easy. I, uh, <laughs> I no, I, I can I can only imagine that I'm to, I'm told you have a wonderful house here with a lot of cool interesting <laughs> I do. stuff. But I'd say I'm like I'm probably not going to go on the path that you've seen with other people where they you know, they've they've departed Facebook and then been very aggressively against Facebook. And we talked about this earlier. I'm not going to do that because it'd be bad for the VR industry. Yeah. it'd be personally gratifying, huge, hugely bad thing to do if I want VR to succeed uh, as it's currently structured. 